On today's episode of Top Shelf Gear, we're going to look at the story behind how I managed to acquire this OD Venus guitar. It's going to be a pretty adventurous story, guys, so I would suggest grab yourself a beverage, some type of refreshment, have a seat, and let's get into it. So for those of you guys that may not know, OD Guitars is a super high-end custom boutique guitar builder out of Israel, gentleman by the name of Omer Deutsch. I highly recommend head on over to his website, browse the beautiful gallery of all of these amazing guitars. You guys may already know OD Guitars has really grown in popularity amongst the heavy metal progressive guitar community. Now, as far as getting into my story on how I managed to get my hands on this incredible guitar, last fall, I was browsing listings on Facebook Marketplace, just searching for different things, and somehow I just happened to stumble on this ridiculously amazing OD Venus guitar. I was really shocked when I realized that this listing for such a high-end, uncommon boutique guitar happened to be fairly local to me in just a nearby city within my state. Knowing the rarity of these boutique guitars, I went ahead and decided to reach out to the seller to see if I could get a little bit more information. Right off the bat, I could tell the seller was legit. He was, in fact, the original owner of the guitar. He even took the time to share a lot of the photos that were provided by Omer to show the step-by-step -step build process of the guitar getting painted, sanded, finished, getting the top glued on, showing the entire build process. So I thought that was really, really cool. Now, something that really stood out to me with this particular instrument was he actually worked out the specs for this guitar to replicate very similar spec to what was used by Roman, the guitar player from the band Ginger. Very similar specs to a lot of the guitars you might have seen Roman play in the past. Six string multi-scale, reverse headstock, bare knuckle painkillers, ash body, all of the above. So after talking to the seller, looking at all the photos, talking about you know how rare, unique, and amazing this guitar was, I decided to see if we could kind of work something out as far as price. Because at this point, I mean, I just knew I had to have this thing. This is one of those rare instances where a total stranger just happened to order something that completely aligned with the same exact specs I would want if I were to order the guitar myself. Which, if you guys didn't know, these guitars spec out close to around $5,000 and are going to have a 12-month build time. So from there, we went back and forth, talked a little bit about price, and as expected, he was pretty firm. I did manage to get him to budge just a little bit which I was pretty happy with considering how rare and expensive these guitars are. So we finally managed to come to an agreement on price. I was 100% confirmed, ready to move forward, hop in the car, let's go find a meeting spot, make the deal. Sadly, before coming to an agreement on time and place to meet up and make the deal, the seller ghosted me and I did not hear anything else. Sent a couple messages, waited a few hours. Hey man, what's going on? Are we still good to make this happen? Is there any questions, concerns? There's something that's you know holding you back, you're, you're maybe not 100% comfortable with, or you having regrets? Nothing. I mean, the guy literally got abducted by aliens. I was totally confused. I waited a couple more days, sent a couple final like last effort messages, and just could not get a response from this dude. At this point, I pretty much accepted that, you know what, I'm just gonna have to move on. Maybe it wasn't meant to be, and just have to accept that, I'm gonna have to let this one go. So after giving it a few days just to kind of clear my head, get back to the drawing board, figure out my game plan as far as, you know, what the next steps are gonna be, if I'm gonna plan on buying something else, I went ahead and looked back at a previous build that I had specced out with Kiesel, which you guys would have already seen. Put a link right up here if you want to check out the most recent unboxing for a highly specced out Master Grade Zeracote Osiris. After getting all the specs finalized with Kiesel, decided to move forward, call the guys, ready to throw down, and get that build in the works. So all this took place during last fall. Again, I purchased the Kiesel during the October Halloween sale. Fast forward to the month of January, I'm pretty much just sitting back, just waiting on the Kiesel. Out of the blue, I get a message from the guy selling the OD Venus. Hey man, 
so sorry I didn't get back to you. Had some stuff going on. I do apologize. He told me, I know you were interested in the guitar. You're pretty serious. I just want to let you know that I do still have it available, and I did drop the price. So at this point, I'm obviously kicking myself, right? I'm like, ah, oh, man, like, I mean, I'm so glad to hear back, dude. That's awesome. Glad you're doing all right. Not sure what happened, but I'm glad to hear that it is still available. I told the guy, you know, listen, like, I really appreciate you reaching out, but since I didn't hear back during that time, I went ahead and threw down on the new Kiesel, so I can't really swing it right now looking at another super high dollar guitar. But depending on how long you have it, if it's still available, maybe in the near future, there's a chance I might be able to pull it off. The guy was totally cool about it. He said, no worries at all. There's a chance I'll probably still have it for a while. So if you change your mind or something comes up, just let me know and we can probably still make a deal. So later that night, I'm pretty much just going into like brainstorm mode here. Like, bro, how am I going to work this problem? Like I just threw down on the Kiesel, wasn't expecting this. Obviously the guy still has a guitar. I really want the OD. And on top of that, he did come down a little bit more on the price, which was a little bit less than what we had previously agreed upon before he ghosted. So I'm really trying to figure this out. Went ahead, gave a buddy of mine a call, another fellow gear connoisseur. We kind of talked it over. I was like, dude, like, how am I gonna make this happen, dude? Like, like, how can I figure out an alternative solution here? He made a really good suggestion. He was like, bro, you guys buy and sell, trade stuff all the time. You've got that other blue Kiesel, which you're probably not gonna really need since you've got that crazy, ridiculous, master grade zero code Kiesel in the works. He's like, maybe you should just like offer the dude a trade and see what he says. Right away, I was like, dude, no way, man. Like a guy with an OD Venus, he's not gonna trade for like a Kiesel. I mean, obviously Kiesel makes super cool, high-end, top-notch quality guitars, but again, the difference in price is still pretty vast. But I was like, you know what, man? Got nothing to lose. I'm gonna reach out to the guy and see what he says. Something else to consider, the specs of the Kiesel that I had at the time were very, very similar to that of the OD Venus. Similar color, both six string multi-scales, similar neck woods, all that kind of stuff. So later that night, I messaged the dude about the OD. I told him, look, I absolutely wanna make this happen. I can either do one of two things. I either sell a current guitar that I have and put that towards the OD, or if there's any possible chance you would be interested in this guitar, I could trade it and offer cash plus the trade. He was like, okay, that, that might be a possibility. Can you just, you know, send me over your specs? Let me know what you got. Send it right over. I let him review all the details about the trade. From there, he looked over the specs. We agreed on the value of the trade and how much cash we needed to present to kind of cover that difference. And surprisingly, he said, cool, that works for me. Looks good. I'm down. I was like, dude, no way. Like, I'm... I'm so fired up right now. Like I wasn't expecting it to work out that way. So the following day after locking in the details as far as the meat, the time, the place, all that good stuff. So I'm in the car driving up to the spot, getting ready to pull up. I'm probably about 30, 45 minutes out. I get a message from him. Hey man, I'm here. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll be there momentarily. I pull up to the spot. I'm looking around. Okay, I don't see a blue Honda Civic. I'm a little concerned what's going on. I just, all I need, bro, is like another hang up to stop me from completing this transaction right here. I'm looking around like, dude, where are you at? And he's like, hey, I'm at such and such mall. I was like, oh, cool, well, that's where I'm at. Like, where are you at? And he was like, oh, you must be at like a different mall. I was like, oh, crap. Like, that's a huge issue because apparently the mall that, he was talking about was different than the mall I was talking about, but they share almost the same exact name, except the one he was already at was probably about another 30 minutes out. So I was like, oh crap, dude, like hang tight. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to just hurry up and just, just motor on down and I will be there to make the deal happen. So I get back in the car from where I thought I was supposed to be. I'm just flying down the highway, trying to make this deal happen because I mean, look, you guys have all sold stuff on like Marketplace, you know, Craigslist, whatever the case. I mean, 
dude, you have that underlying sense of like flakiness, especially since the dude flaked out before. I was like, crap, like that's all I need now is to have him linger too long and then he bails. So I'm just like hauling down the highway to get there in time. So after all this frantic run around, I finally met up at the proper destination, got out, met the dude, totally cool, very chill, humble, down to earth guy. I checked out the OD, I was just like blown away. I mean, just totally like jaw dropping. I mean, just seeing it in, in real life. He checked out the Kiesel, he was totally cool with it, seamless transaction, and we got it done. So happy, so grateful, just absolutely like on cloud nine, just amazed that everything finally came to fruition. So. Crazy story, I uh, just wanted to obviously take the time to, to share that with you guys that even if it seems like something's not meant to be or you know that's the one that got away, sometimes you just gotta be patient. Take it one day at a time, you can't force things to happen and uh, sometimes things just happen to work out the way they do. So now that I've shared the story, let's go and take a look at the guitar. So you guys can see here she is in all the glory. It's got the reverse Venus headstock on there. Looks super cool, super aggressive. So as you guys can see, the guitar is just, I mean, it's absolutely stunning. I really think it truly speaks for itself. The color's inspired by the Macro album by Ginger. If you can tell, it's kind of like that aqua, sort of like ocean burst. Really, really nice. It's got that lighter fade in the middle. Highly figured flame maple top. Now something super, super cool, obviously, I think probably the defining characteristic of OD as a brand is what they call their natural geometric chambering. So it's got these really cool cutouts. You can see like on the side there, on uh, both sides of the body. And it really makes for an incredibly light resonant instrument, even when you play it unplugged. I mean, it really just, it's such a clear, beautiful resonance that you get with this guitar. It's got a super lightweight swamp ash body, very comfortable to play, not super heavy at all. As far as the neck, we've got a three piece maple wenge, maple neck, super smooth, super comfortable. I love the neck shape. It is a very thin flat D shape, which if I were to describe, it's, it's not as crazy thin as say maybe like an Ibanez, like a Prestige, but it's still a very, very fast, comfortable shape. Probably my favorite neck shape of any guitar I've ever had. It's definitely thinner than the Kiesel thinner profile. It feels a lot flatter. It's not nearly as round. It is a D shape, but unlike some other D shapes from other brands, you don't really have like that super chunky shoulder around the edges, which I find super, super comfortable. Not too thick, not too thin, uh, definitely fairly thin, but it's not outrageously thin as certain Ibanez models where you just almost get that, that kind of cramping like around that first fret area. Just like all the guitars, it's got their signature chambering on the hip shot locking tuners, which I mean, that's just, to me, that's just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, it does save a little bit of weight as well. So take a minute to look at that like massive volute on the back of the neck. I mean, that's just so cool. Provides a lot more stability on the neck. I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys can see that okay. Again, very cool. As far as pickups, this one does have the bare knuckle painkillers. Again, very popular choice amongst the progressive metal community. Great for those chugging, genty, low tunings. One volume, three-way toggle. Very simple. I don't like a bunch of cluttered controls. It just gets in the way, in my opinion. Excellent choices as far as the woods. Like I said, if I were to spec this out myself, this is pretty much exactly what I would order. I love the flame maple top, great figuring, swamp ash body, very light, maple neck, super smooth, super comfortable. Not crazy heavy either for a, a traditional headstock, normal size guitar. This one comes in at right around 7.1 pounds which in my opinion is very lightweight. I think a lot of that has to do with, again, being a lighter swamp ash, and obviously this chambering helps save a lot of weight too. This one does have an ebony fretboard, super simple, no crazy complicated inlays. You guys have probably seen a lot of 
OD builds where, I mean, you can go absolutely wild. I mean, Omar does some super intricate custom inlays. So if that's your, if that's your thing, I mean, he can definitely make it happen for you. I'm not a big fan of like super crazy inlays myself. So again, the way the gentleman spec this out, I mean, I, I literally would have done the same thing. It just has like the basic uh, wooden inlay at the 12th fret as with all of his guitars. Something else worth mentioning as far as neck construction, you guys can tell this is a set neck. Absolutely phenomenal heel. I mean, it is super comfortable. I mean, you can easily, very easily get all the way up to your 24th fret with ease. Take a minute to show the headstock for you guys. You can see it's got the same flame maple. It's got that OD truss rod cover, which looks like is actually an engraved piece of wenge. Really cool. Bone nut. I think that really helps contribute to the, the resonance and the tone. I would like to spend a little bit of time talking about neck wood. You guys have probably heard me say in other videos, I'm very careful when it comes to uh, very aggressive, like porous woods, like your wenges and your black limbos and stuff like that. One of my biggest concerns before putting hands on the actual guitar was I was a little worried that the wenge, even though it's only a quarter inch lamination, could be a little bit coarse and rough and, and not feel great. In my experience owning and playing this guitar, I would definitely say this feels like somewhat of a, a very, very thin satin finish. So you don't actually feel any of like the texture in the wenge. Like if you were to do a blindfold test and play it, I would say most people would probably assume this is just a one piece maple neck. So just something to bear in mind if you're like me, if you're coming from maybe like some type of like tongue oiled finish or a really coarse rough neck wood from like other brands, you're not really gonna feel the, the pores of the wenge that much. A good example would be like if you've ever played a mayonnaise, they have a very open grain texture. It's all natural with the wenge. So that compared to this, I mean, super, super smooth. I would not have any concerns at all if you're worried about the texture. Just look at that top. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning in that, in that aquaburst. I mean, a really, really good looking guitar. So beautiful. That chambering just has so much character to it. Very cool. So overall, amazing guitar, guys. I would say this is by far my favorite guitar in my collection. Super, super grateful that I was able to acquire this uh, given the circumstance with the whole story with how it came to be. So overall, guys, absolutely amazing guitar. Been super, super thrilled with it. Thank you guys for taking the time to listen to the ups and downs of the story about how this came to be. I have spoken to the owner uh, since our recent trade from, from a few months back, and he still has the Kiesel. He loves it. Uh, super cool dude. I'm happy. He's happy. All is good. I want to do a separate dedicated video just to go over the playability, the tone, the sounds. Again, it's such a special guitar. This is really going to be more of like a two-part series on this one. So... Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts about the OD. If you have one, maybe you've got one in the works, you've got an order in, share your thoughts, share your feedback. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Subscribe for more. Have an awesome day.